Son, Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. Okay, now I know people make fun of me for saying this, okay, but really, this time, this really is one of my really favorite Gospels, okay? And it's not just this is one of my favorite Gospels, but this is one of my favorite Sundays of the entire church year. And this is one Sunday that I circle on the calendar. Those who know how the church does it is that there's a calendar of readings, and it's like every year, okay? So the we're in the month of Tut, which is the first month in the Coptic year, and this is the fourth Sunday. So the fourth Sunday of the month of Tut is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite Sundays, because believe me, there's power in these readings for today. There's tremendous amount of power, but in order to get the fullness of the power, you've got to make sure that you put all the readings together. Now this is something that I've said before, and I'll say it again, and I'm going to keep on saying it to the day that I die. I'm going to beg you, beg you, beg you, beg you, beg you till I die that you don't come to church without reading the readings in advance. That you don't just show up here on Sunday and just, and just rely on listening to what's read up here. That you read the readings in advance, especially the readings that were read when you probably weren't attending. Okay, so as you know, there's like Vespers every Saturday night. All right, and, and that's the beginning of the preparation of the literature. There's a gospel that's read in Vespers. Okay? No one attends that. Very, very few people attend that. That's okay. I'm not even saying attend. I'm just saying read. Okay? And then there's a gospel that's read in the morning, in Matins, morning raising of incense, which again, very few people hear that early. That's okay. But at least read. Because when you read it all together, you see a wonderful picture today. The purpose of the gospels, I always believe, is to draw a picture of God for us, okay? To reveal God to us and to like draw a picture. So I want to walk you through the Gospels that was read to us, okay, beginning from last night's Gospel, and I want you to help me see the picture that we see today of Christ. Anyone know the Gospel of last night, Vespers? Anyone read the Gospel in advance? Okay, it came from Matthew chapter 9, which is a story about two miracles. Okay, one time when the Lord Jesus Christ was walking down the road and he ran, a man, a nobleman named Jairus came running after him and running, running, running and, and said, please, 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 I have a daughter and she's sick. She had died. Okay, I need you to heal her. And what did Christ do for that man? He healed her. And then as he's walking, okay, before even he gets to the daughter, while the man came to interrupt him, and then as he's walking down the road to get to the daughter, another woman came woman who's very famous, the bleeding woman, a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, okay, gone through a lot of pain and a lot of stuff, and this woman came and just touched the hem of the, 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 the robe and just touched the hem, and what was her result? She was healed. That was last night. This morning, early morning, is Matthew chapter 15. Again, story about a woman, this time a woman was a Gentile, a woman from Canaan. And she also had a sick daughter who was demon-possessed. And she begged, Lord, please. And even this time, the Lord, you remember the story, he's a little rough with her. Okay, first he kind of ignores her. And then she says, please, please, please. Then he said, you know, I'm just for the lost sheep of Israel. And she said, well, even the dogs eat off the master's table. You remember that, that discussion. End result, healed. And then the gospel that was just read, Luke chapter 7. Sinful woman woman who's known throughout town as the worst woman in the world. Sinful, sinful, sinful. She comes and result healed. What's the picture that is trying to be drawn for us here today? It's the healer. Today is not Christ the judge. Today is not Christ the shepherd even. Today is, is, is Jesus the healer. As we say in the liturgy, the physician of our souls, our bodies, and our spirits. And he shows today that if you've got a problem with your body, bleeding, healed. You've got a problem with your soul, demon-possessed, healed. You've got a problem with your spirit, sin, healed. Truly, he is the physician of our souls, our bodies, and our spirits. And he showed us today that anyone he touches finds healing. That's a great day, isn't it? What more could you ask for? What a great picture. 
of Jesus as the healer. And everyone that he touched got healing. Right? Wrong. Wrong. Not everyone got healing. Who didn't get healing? Someone touched him and didn't get healing. That's right, like he said in the front here. The gospel today from Luke 7 was about two characters. Simon the Pharisee and the sinful woman. And Simon was the only person who didn't find healing this day. Today's a sad day, not a happy day in the church readings. It's not a day that we celebrate, it's a day that we mourn. Jesus came to heal each and every single person that he came into contact with. And if Jesus would have run into 50 people, he'd have healed 50 people. But somehow, this poor guy, Simon, not only he ran into Jesus, but Jesus came into his house. The others, like the bleeding woman, had to fight through crowds and push and shove and fell in the dirt and fight, fight, fight just to touch the piece of his robe. The Canaanite woman had to go all the way into a different country. Jairus had to travel a long distance and beg and plead. And Simon, you, he came to your house. He sat at your table. You had a meal together. And you were the one who didn't get here. What happened? What happened? First thing, Simon didn't think he needed healing. Did he need healing? Well, you better believe he needed healing. What did he need healing for? What did he need he healing for? He was a good guy, right? He's a Pharisee. Fair, you don't get promoted to be a Pharisee unless you're obviously a good guy, right? So he got selected, or he got, uh, worked his way up the ranks. He became, he's a leader of the people. He stands here like I do, and he preaches in front of people. Obviously, he's a good guy. Doesn't need healing, right? What does what he need healing for? When, when Jesus was speaking okay, to that sinful woman and he didn't rebuke her, look what it says about Simon here. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. What's your problem here, Simon? See, here's the problem. Simon looked great on the outside, just like me and you look great on the outside. And, and me... I'm the first one. I don't even talk about you. I'm talking about me. It is my job, okay? And I make it a, my task every single day to appear perfect in front of you. That's what I do. I stand up here and I appear like I got it all together. Just like you, just come here on Sunday and you want everyone to see that you got it all together. You don't want anyone to see any sickness, any problem. But you got problems just like I got problems. And Simon had a problem on the inside. And the problem on the inside was that he was a judgmental little man. And he liked to judge people. So even though you didn't see anything on the outside, he wore his Sunday best. And he was at church nice and early and he said all the right things. Simon had a big problem on the inside. And even to show you the problem, look how our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, kind of sticks it to Simon in like a nice way, but he's sticking it to him. When he tells him that parable about the guy with the 500 denarii and the 50 denarii, and he says, Simon, which one do you think is going to love more? So Simon said, obviously the guy who was forgiven more. How did Christ respond to Simon? Well said. You have rightly judged. Get a, get a. Gives him one of these. He's helping him out. He's helping him saying, you got a problem with judging. And I'm even trying to joke with you and tell you, judge, I'm trying to help you. Simon didn't get it. Simon wasn't healed this day. And to me, this is a sad day. Yes, we celebrate the other four people who found healing, but it's more sad to see one who Jesus came, who the doctor came to his house, sat at his table, and he walked away still sick. And that sickness is one that leads to death. Why Simon wasn't healed? What was the difference between Simon and the rest of them? Okay? First thing I said is that he didn't know he needed to be healed. Okay? Let's give him that one. Let's even give him, okay, let's assume that even he knew he needed to be healed. What was the difference 
between the way Simon spoke to the Lord and the way the others spoke to the Lord. Now the easy answer that I put up there on the screen is faith. Okay? The other four, four people who are mentioned who talked about their faith. The Canaanite woman, Christ said, I haven't seen great faith like this in all of Israel. And to the sinful woman in the gospel, he said, go in peace, your faith has saved you. So the easy answer is, because they had faith, they were healed. They were healed because they had faith, and we know that. You have to have faith to be healed. So our message is, we should have faith. Is that our message? That's a pretty generic message, and that isn't really saying much. And everyone knows they need to have faith. I don't like general terms which have no personal application. Give me a specific about their faith. Like, faith is like this big, okay? So give me one of the characteristics of their faith, specifically their faith that allowed them to get healing this day, and this boy Simon didn't get healing. What characteristic of their faith was very, very evident? Let's go through some of the verses, and you tell me what was unique about their faith. First, we'll start with the last night gospel, the Jairus, daughter who had died, and the bleeding woman. This is Jairus, travels a long distance, running after Christ. And this is a guy who is a nobleman and a guy who, you know, distinguished man, running. And he says, my daughter has just died. Come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Just come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Bleeding woman. Again, woman in pain, woman in this, crowd, fighting, and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. If only I shall touch his garment, I shall be made well. Next. The Canaanite woman. The old woman of Canaan from that region cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Then, like I said, Christ is a little dry with her, not very warm with her. And she responds. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. He was ignoring her, and she screamed, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs from which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, A woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. What was it about these ladies' faith? What was it about their faith that we need to learn from? Did Simon the Pharisee have faith? Yeah. If, if the generic term of, of faith is believing, did he believe... Okay, let me ask you this way. Did he believe that Jesus could probably heal sicknesses? Yes. Yes. He called him a prophet. And he said that this man was a prophet. He would know this. So in his mind, he thinks he's some kind of prophet. Calls him teacher. Did he think that Jesus could probably heal? Yes. And I'll even go so far as to say that he may have even believed that Jesus could heal. But there's a difference between him and the other ladies. He believed Jesus could heal. They believed only Jesus could heal. He believed Jesus could heal. They believed only Jesus could heal. See the difference? What's the difference between their faith and his faith? And to be honest, their faith and my faith? Desperate. They were desperate. Desperation is what clearly marked them. That lady with the blood was saying, Look out! There may be 12 men in front of me. I'm going to go through each and every single one of them. Try and stop me. You're not going to stop me. I am desperate. I am touching that hem of the robe today. I don't care what anyone says. The sinful woman in Luke 7 said, I'm busting into someone else's house who doesn't know me and they're going to spit on me and reject me and all this kind of stuff. I'm going in. I'm taking the flask. I'm smashing the whole flask. I'm kissing the feet. I'm the hair. The oil. I'm doing everything. I'm desperate. One believed that Jesus could heal. One believed that only Jesus could heal. One believed that Jesus was a healer. One believed that only Jesus was the healer. You know the difference between these two? Simon treated Christ like 
someone interviewing a candidate for a job. He's a good man. Come have a seat. Let me ask you some questions. Let me see how you interact with others. And don't call us, we'll call you. I'll let you know how it goes. I'll let you know next week if I decide to buy it or to, yeah, we'll let you know. How did the ladies treat him? Like a 911 phone call. There's a fire? Help. This guy was interviewing one of many options. These ladies had a fire in their house and they're calling the fireman and saying, we need help. And they threw themselves onto the feet of Christ. Which one do you relate more with? Your prayers. Which one looks more like your prayers? You reading the Bible in the morning. Which one looks more like the way you read the Bible in the morning? You come to church on a Sunday. Nice fall Sunday, weather nice. Plans, we'll go to Wegmans for lunch, wherever it is you go. Watch the skins get beaten again, maybe. You stand here and you pray and you take communion. Which one looks more like you? I often think to myself, it's not what I do that Jesus is watching. It's how I do it. You guys know the story of the widow with the two mites. The widow with the two mites who put it into the, the treasury. Do you know what it says? Okay, it says that Jesus, it's in, it's in Mark 12, Jesus sat opposite the treasury and watched blank people put their money into the treasury. Jesus sat opposite the treasury and watched blank people put their money into the treasury. How? You know, oftentimes we read the story of the widow with the two mites and say, she was great because she gave all that she had. No. No. Jesus doesn't praise her for what she gave. He praises her for how she gave. He doesn't praise her for what she gave, but how she gave. And, and I got news for you. If you think you are going to get the highest spot in heaven because of what you did, you can stand next to Simon. It's not what, it's how. It makes a difference. <clears throat> Jesus came to heal each and every single person. Came to heal each and every single person. Whether you realize it or don't realize it, you need healing. Now the ironic thing, which of course I don't believe in irony, I believe in God, but we'll give you irony, is that this message came to us today. Today here at St. Mark's, we're beginning a new campaign. For those who've never been part of a church campaign, every time in the fall, every year in the fall, we do a church-wide campaign, which means that we all discuss in one topic together and study in a topic together. What's the name of this year's campaign? Life's Healing Choices. Ironic? Coincidence? Man, I don't believe in that stuff. Jesus is giving us a message. Just like he gave to Simon. Just like, I'm sorry, just like he came to Simon, he ate in his house, he's coming to this house. He's coming to this house. And believe me, I was looking over this campaign this past weekend as I was preparing and I was reading over the book. It is fabulous. And I say that from the bottom of my heart. It is fabulous, and I promise you, each and every single person needs it. Each and every single person has something in them, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a spiritual, whether it's an emotional, whether it's a physical, whether it's a habit, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a whatever. Yeah, in front of you, we show that we don't. But each one knows inside that he's got something. And I promise you, this campaign is going to be a fabulous one. And some people are going to find real healing that they've been looking for for a long, long, long time. I promise you. But I also promise you, it's not going to be everyone. It's not going to be everyone. What makes a difference is how you approach it. Those who approach like Simon coolly, calmly, checking it out, Lee, probably will even say, eh, eh. For those who come desperate, is the ones who's going to find something good. The healer is coming. 
the healer is coming. And like Simon, he's coming to this house. And he's going to be here. And he's ready to touch each and every single person. You know, if you study the prayers of the church, one of the most common things that we pray for in the church is sickness. We're always praying for sick. And even I was thinking about it, you know, recently we divided up, okay, so us three priests, we divided up the tasks of the priests in different things. So my responsibility is like blessing people's homes who buy new homes, okay? So my job is when someone buys a new house, to go bless their house. And when I signed up for this, it was like five, six months ago, the economy was down, things were great. But over the past few months, looks like the market has picked up. Okay, and every week I got like two or three of them and I got a waiting list now of new homes. So I'm like the only one in the world that wants the market to go back down. Okay, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. One of the things I noticed in the prayer, when we pray in people's house, is we keep praying for the sick. And I don't understand. We're supposed to come and celebrate the new house and like, like celebrate with the people in the new house. Church says no, pray for the sick. Why? Because there's sickness in the house. There's sickness in every house. Why every liturgy we pray for the sick? Because there's sickness in every church. Why any, any, any prayer in the church, the majority of them pray some way in form of the sick? Because there's sickness in every body. And you have sickness inside you. Question is whether you realize it or don't realize it. And then two, whether you come in desperate faith to the healer or not. God is coming. The healer is coming. And he's coming to heal you. And just like we pray in the liturgy, purify our hearts, our souls, our bodies, our spirits, our eyes, our thoughts, our consciences, our understanding. And how we're always praying that God would cleanse and purify and heal. Well, I promise you this campaign is going to be a chance for that to come true. But you must come in faith, desperate faith. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Bless.